Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. If you've ever looked at a picture or a video on your computer and then looked at your phone and been like, what the f is that? Which I have certainly done. Chances are your monitor needs to be calibrated. In fact, there are a number of symptoms that can help you determine whether or not your monitor might need an adjustment and a bunch of ways to actually go about calibrating it, ranging from built-in or free solutions all the way up to using something like this for a couple hundred bucks. And while it's all well and good to make sure that your display is on point and is color accurate as possible, is it really worth it for everyone? In this video, I wanna discuss not only what to look out for and some potential solutions for monitor calibration, but also where it can be best applied, the benefits it has, and who should be the ones actually worrying about it. So with that said, let's get into it. Before we go anywhere with this, I think it's important to try and get a monitor that's somewhat accurate out of the box. And there's a few things that you can do to make sure that that's the case. First thing is you're gonna look at reviews that include color calibration. A site like ratings.com is good for this where it'll show you the before and after of the color accuracy specs. Another thing you can do is look out for monitors that have some kind of factory calibration that's often marked in the specs of the marketing material. That will save you some headache of having something that's totally out to lunch as far as display quality goes. I've unboxed monitors before that have had good user ratings hooked them up and had to box them right back up and return them because the displays were so bad. It turns out user reviews, especially with monitors, are not the greatest indicator for how good a monitor is because for a lot of folks, as long as it turns on and displays the content they want, they don't really care all that much about everything else, which begs the question, do you really need to worry about color accuracy? That kind of depends on who you are. If you're doing graphic design, 3D renders, photo or video work, Basically anything highly visual, I'd say that it does have quite a benefit, but outside of that, I don't think that you need to worry much as long as you're buying quality products. Most screens these days are gonna be color accurate to a point that just casual everyday use is not going to be something noticeable, but if you really want accurate color and lighting, it's definitely something that you might wanna look at. Well, the example that I mentioned earlier, looking at your screen and then looking at your phone can be the most obvious way of knowing if your colors are out of whack, just because you've got something to reference. There's a few other signs to look out for as well. Things like saturation levels, basically how vibrant your picture is, especially on older monitors, things can tend to look dull or washed out because our monitors can tend to lose or distort some of the vibrance as they age, but it can also be the reverse where things look too colorful as well. The same goes for contrast and brightness. If something always looks lighter or darker on your monitor than it does on everything else, or if you see anything that should be a gradient where there should be a smooth transition between colors and you can visibly see the change from one color to another, that can be a red flag as well. That color change issue is called color banding and it can be a little tricky because compressed video, like videos on YouTube or basically any streaming video service will also suffer from banding. Now that's completely normal and is just a side effect of squashing colors together to shrink down file size. In fact, you'll probably see some in this video along the wall where it's going from light to dark, but Luckily, there are tools online that you can find that help you check for banding issues. And not only that, there are online color calibration tools as well. There's a few sites out there that will help you determine or calibrate some of the more simple aspects of correcting your display. Now, things like brightness, contrast, and sharpness. There are also built-in tools in your operating system that will do quick adjustments for things like this as well. On Mac, if you go into your system settings and go into displays under the color profiles, you'll see a little add button where you can run through a quick series of tests. And the same thing exists on Windows. If I just search for display color calibration and go into it, it'll run me through some quick tests to make sure that there is nothing that's really sticking out. Those tests are great for easy to make adjustments, but when it comes to actual color and fine tuning a lot of this stuff, those tests will only get you so far. When you're trying to adjust your color, there's one last free thing that we can try to correct our displays, and that's by using our phone as a reference and manually tuning it ourselves to try and get it as close to the phone as possible. Using an iPhone is a really solid reference because they're generally very color accurate, and most people consume content on their phone. So if you're a creator and most of your work lives on the interwebs, 
this is probably what most people are going to be viewing your content on anyway. There's a video that goes into depth talking about how this works, which I'll link below that dives into this a little bit more. But personally, I find that this is somewhat difficult and tedious. After trying to adjust this for too long, I find that my eyes start to perceive the colors differently. And I'd much rather just use a tool to more accurately measure my display, which brings us to this little guy. This is a Data Color Spider X calibration tool, and the pro version of this will run you about $169 regular. I picked this one up for $129 on sale. There's an Elite version as well. It's exactly the same tool, just the provided software is a little different where the Elite offers some more advanced analysis tools and fine tuning options. The nice thing is, is that you can always upgrade to that if you want, but I just have the pro version and for a simple calibration, it works just fine. The app has a really simple user interface and it'll run through a series of things that you can do from checking to see how accurate your display is, to doing a full calibration. You do a full calibration by simply hanging this tool over your monitor and tilting it up slightly so that it sits flat on your display. You follow the on-screen prompts and it'll save your profile and set it for you after and you're all done. I do wanna mention as well, if you want some more advanced calibration options and you don't mind a bit more of a technical setup, you can use an app called Display Cal instead of the Spider X software. You will, however, only be able to use this effectively with Windows and Intel Macs. It doesn't play nicely with Apple Silicon, unfortunately, but it's much more advanced and powerful than the provided data color software. To set that up on Windows, you'll have to restart your computer and enter your boot settings, disable driver signature enforcement, boot it back up and go to your device manager and update the driver to the provided Argyle one that's downloaded and installed when you first open DisplayCal. Uh, there's detailed instructions on the Argyle website, but once it's set up, it's easy to calibrate your monitor and is a little bit more of a thorough process than on the provided Spider X software. If you're just looking at the calibration alone on these two pieces of software outside of the extra features, personally don't notice a whole lot of difference visually. They both provide a very similar image and effectively calibrate your monitor. Even on something like this LG monitor that I have that is color calibrated from the factory and overall has a really accurate color out of the box, you can still see a slight distinction between the factory profile and the one that's calibrated through these tools. Also, another side benefit to owning one of these little guys is you do get detailed specs for your monitors like brightness levels and nits. And for me personally, I wanna do a lot more advanced tests both in monitor and laptop reviews, just so I can give specific stats on what things look like out of the box, whether that be brightness levels or color accuracy. I know that's a pretty specific use case, but outside of that, if you're doing things like editing photos that are going to be printed, color grading videos, or doing any kind of professional work that's highly visual, I'd say it's definitely worth grabbing one of these tools. Otherwise, I think you're totally fine grabbing a monitor that has generally a high color accuracy or is factory calibrated. I'd stay away from really cheap budget options as they do often have bad panels and I would 100% make sure that you avoid TN panels at all costs. And stick to IPS or VA. If you have an old monitor kicking around and you'd like to just take a stab at color correcting it for free, some of the options that I mentioned earlier might be worth taking a look at, but for me, there really isn't any substitute for calibrating with a tool made for the job. I'd love to know where everyone else comes out on this. Is this something that you've done? Have you had good results? Or is this something that you're unsure about doing? Let me know in the comments down below, along with any monitors that you found look really good out of the gate or that you'd like to see show up on the channel here. I'll drop links to my monitor, which I love, the Spider X tool and any relevant info in the description below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button if you want to see more tech related content or if you want to join a reality show with me and form an alliance that we eventually break and become sworn enemies, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.